Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Woe. So I am doing the classics book tag today. Uh, I think I originally saw this maybe on Sam's Nonsense. I can't remember. I'll see if I can find the video that I originally saw this on and link it below. Um, it actually is a blog based book tag. Like I don't think this one started on YouTube. Uh, but I wanted to do this because I have been reflecting lately on how much I want to get back into some classics reading. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as the tag goes on. But anyway, I've just been in like I've been enjoying classics a lot. You'll notice that there's a lot of bare spaces right now behind me on my bookshelf because the other reason I wanted to do this was to show all my beautiful paint when cloth bounds. Um, I've been getting a lot of them recently. <laughs> so uh, I've just been enjoying collecting those and yeah just all around this felt like the right time to do a classics tag. So yeah let's just dive into these questions. So the first question is an overhyped classic that you really didn't like and three come to mind. I did not like any of these and they have a lot of people who really love them. The first two I think I've talked about before in my popular books I hate video uh, and those are The Grapes of Wrath. I really think is it just didn't work for me. I would be curious to read it as an adult because I think some of it ha maybe had to do with the fact that I was a teenager and like didn't get it or like wasn't reading it for the same reasons I might be reading it now. Um, so there was that one. The Call of the Wild is one of my all-time least favorite books, maybe my least favorite book uh, by Jack London. I just really I just really hated it. And I know a lot of people actually really love that book but um, and it, you know I think as like a classic for children or teens it gets brought up a lot so maybe but like I read it as a child slash teen and like hated it. Anyway uh, so there's that one and then another one I don't think I've mentioned before that I really did not like was My Antonia by Willa Cather. Um, again this gets I've mentioned this a few times I feel like a very bad American because I don't tend to really like American literary classics very much like I tend to much prefer the kind of European end of things uh, for what is considered to be a literary classic but anyway those are some of the ones that I per personally don't enjoy um, but I think with all books of course it's very your mileage may vary. The next one is a favorite time period to read about. I guess I would just say generally the 19th century that seems to kind of be my sweet spot for classics like I really like you know some of the Regency stuff with Jane Austen but then definitely getting to Victorian literature is what I what I particularly really enjoy like because even getting into sort of more the like later period like edging closer to Edwardian um, I also enjoy that with someone like I think Oscar Wilde would be still in the 19th century like the very late 19th century so anyway um, yeah I would say that the 19th century particularly in the UK tends to be my favorite. I do really like someone like Shakespeare so I can get into some of that. I do like some medieval literature as well um, as well as like some of the actual like real like Greco-Roman classics I can get down with that too um, and you know fairy tales yada 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 like I, I like it all pretty much but if in terms of like a lot of my favorites seem to be clustered in the 19th century. The next question is what is your favorite fairy tale and unquestionably for me that is Beauty and the Beast. I think pro honestly probably because I loved Belle so much in the Disney adaptation like I you know of the Disney princesses she was the one I looked the most like and she was like a book nerd which is what I've always been so I really loved and identified with her and I think it just made me love that fairy tale. It's also my favorite fairy tale to have retold to me. Um, I am just an absolute sucker for a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, my very favorites are Angela Carter's in her collection The Bloody Chamber but yeah I Beauty and the Beast for sure. Okay number four is what is the classic you are most embarrassed to have not read yet? Now I will caveat this by saying that I I don't believe in reader shame or shaming people for having or having not read things. In terms of a book that I am surprised that I missed in my like in my youth youthful reading of classics because I really like Dickens a lot so I'm just surprised that I never actually I don't think anyway have read this. That's David Copperfield. So this is one that I would definitely like to get to. It is a big honker of a book so uh, we shall see but yeah I, I mean Great Expectations is is probably my favorite Dickens and based on what I know about this I think a lot of the things that I like in Great Expectations in terms of like kind of the coming of age or biography kind of piece of it. I, I think that I would really like this. So yeah this is I guess less embarrassed and more just like I am surprised that I didn't didn't have at least the first round of pass at this in my youth. Um, so yeah this is one that I would like to get to at some point. The next one is the question I'm most excited about which is what are the top five classics you would like to read soon? 
So I am thinking, and I'm not committed myself to this because, I don't know, I just want to think about it a little bit more, but I am thinking that for next year, I'm probably going to pick a list of six to 12 classics that I want to commit to getting to, just because I've recently been remembering how much I love reading classics. I've read, I think, three or four this year, and every time I'm like, oh, really like classics. Why don't I make time to read these more? Um, particularly Cranford was a, a good reading experience for me this year. So anyway, of the ones that I kind of have on hand that I've been thinking about reading, some of the ones that might go on that list include The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, because this is a book that I got halfway through and then like misplaced, I think, basically, and so I didn't finish it. But it is like the one of the original mystery novels ever written. Um, and another Wilkie Collins we will talk about later in this list that I absolutely adore. So I was really enjoying this and it's a it's an easier type classic to get through so like I would like to go ahead and polish this off. Actually this year if I get a chance I would like to finish this one off. Another one that I may read this year because a friend of mine uh, and I have talked about doing kind of a buddy read together of it because our book club won't be back in session until next February so we're like maybe we should just pick a classic to read for December uh, and that is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. So I have read I have been specifically trying to parcel out my Jane Austen because there's so few of them. Uh, I've read four of hers. I've read uh, Emma, Persuasion, Sense and Sensibility, and Pride and Prejudice, but I have Northanger Abbey, Mansfield Park, and then Love and Friendship, which is not, I don't believe, a complete work, but it is some Jane Austen to read. So really two, two of her main novels left. And this one I've always heard is good for the fall. I've, I'm also a little surprised slash disappointed in myself that I didn't read this as a part of, oh, I just realized that the pages are all messed up in this. That's so sad. Um, I, I'm sad that I didn't read this as a part of my thesis on romance because this like I think is making fun of romance or like playing on some what at the time were sort of classic tropes of romance. Uh, so anyway I'm interested to read this and like I said I think I may even be able to get to this this year. And then three that would definitely be candidates for the project I was talking about for next year. One is Brideshead Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. Um, I've actually never read any Evelyn Waugh but this and Scoop are two that I've always wanted to get to and yeah I just I think that I will really based on what I know of him and some of like the quotes and stuff I've seen from him I think I would really like this and I'm very interested in the kind of project that this book has because I, I know a lot about what's in this book um so yeah this is definitely on that list another one that I really would like to get to sometime soon because I've never actually read any Anne Bronte is The Tenant at Wildfeld Hall I would really like to read this and Agnes Grey um but I've heard that both are wonderful uh Jane Eyre is my all-time favorite book and I really like everything that I've read uh, from the Brontes thus far so I would really like to try Anne Bronte and I'm actually a little uh, maybe this goes in my embarrassing category I'm a little ashamed of myself that I've not gotten to her yet but that definitely is on the list and then the fifth one that I might get to next year would be The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Now he is one, this is a book that I read in my youth. Um, I suspect I read an abridged version just because this is such a fucking long book and I don't remember it being this long. Um, so I think I may have read an abridged version, but yeah, I really enjoyed this when I read this as a kid and I would really like to revisit it as an adult. So those are ones that I'm thinking about. These, these three in particular are ones that might go on that kind of six to 12 books that uh, classics that I want to get to next year. The other thing I've realized is with my new job during the week, it's hard for me to get a lot of reading in in the evening. But and, and just so you know, in terms of how I like to finish books, I really like being able to sit down and finish a book in one sitting just because if I I'm I have so many books going at one time, if I don't do that, like I can have up to 10 going at one time if I'm just sort of dipping in and out. But I think reading classics in smaller bursts is like much more how I like to read them. So I'm thinking that like if I picked a classic to have as my sort of like during the week, uh, like hour of reading kind of book because that's about all I can really handle usually in the evenings. It might be a good way for me to get through some of these kind of bigger intimidating books and leaning into what I'm in the mood to read during the week. Um, so anyway, all that to say, I'm, I'm still kind of mulling if I'm going to do that or not, but that's something I'm definitely thinking about doing because I do love classics and I really want to get to some of these that I've been wanting to either like reread or read for the first time. Okay, the next question is your favorite retelling modern book or series like book series based Based on a classic like your favorite retelling and I have a whole video about retelling so I'll link that somewhere but the one that immediately comes to mind to me that I've really enjoyed recently is Heartstone which is a 
Pride and Prejudice retelling in a in an alternate world with dragons. Like it's a fantasy book that has that's like based on Pride and Prejudice. And I am so delighted to tell you that there is a new series that's coming out with this. So I've got the first one on order. I can't wait to or not the first one, but like the next book in the series, um, which I had no idea. I this works completely perfectly well as a standalone. Um, so if you don't want to get into a whole series or commit to a whole series, you could just read this one. But I'm really excited that there's going to be more. And by the time this is going up, I may already have it. I'm not sure. Sure, but uh but yeah this is just like I really this is one of my favorite retellings okay and then the next one is your favorite movie or TV version of of classics that you've enjoyed um, and actually I t I'm somebody who really likes adaptations movie and TV adaptations of books I'm not like some purist who's like oh they're all terrible I definitely don't feel that way and there's a lot that I've enjoyed um, some of the ones that kind of came to mind the David Suchet ITV Poirot adaptations of Agatha Christie are like excellent and people absolutely love them. My personal favorite Poirot adaptation is the 1970s adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. We'll get to the most recent one soon in a different question but um i think those work really well there have been a lot of really excellent adaptations of pride and prejudice both as like retelling something like bridget jones's diary but i think you know the bbc pride and prejudice to me is like the like the canonical pride and prejudice retelling that one is like the best one but also like lizzie bennett's diaries that web web series is absolutely fantastic and like a great modern reinterpretation. I love that. Um, yeah, there's just been a lot of really good Pride and Prejudice adaptations. Oh, also like the, the 2005, I think, movie adaptation of Pride and Prejudice was also really, really good. I thought for something that was not like a series, but like just they had to do the whole book in one movie, I thought that was the best one I've seen. So yeah, there's a lot of great Pride and Prejudice movie TV adaptations. Fairy tale wise, I would say kind of what I was saying earlier that the Disney Beauty and the Beast is my personal favorite. It's just, I think, nostalgia wise I just love it so I like that and then in terms of um, my favorite kind of what I was talking about with Bridget Jones's diary and the Lizzie Bennett series like a uh, retelling in movie TV version I would say clueless which is a retelling of uh, Jane Austen's Emma is my favorite sort of like retelling the story but it to a modern audience that I've seen on t on like the big screen um I just think it has a lot of fun with what's happening in this book I think it brings out interesting themes that are underlying in the book when it gets translated and that to me is what I always really like in a retelling or an adaptation is for it to be an an interpretation that lends new light to the original source material so yeah like I said I like a lot of these ad like a lot of adaptations of classics I mean I even like the campy three musketeer slash uh, Man in the Iron Mask movies from the 90s. Like those are fun that are adopted like from Alexander Dumont. Like I tend to really like adaptations. There's only a few like I mean I definitely have a list of ones that I don't like. We will get to that in a second. But like in general I'm I'm into the project of adapting classics for TV and movie because I think it's a great way to get people like thinking about the source material again. Oh and I sorry I also forgot Sense and Sensibility the sort of like direct movie retelling of this is fantastic. The one with um, Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet from I think like 95-ish. It was directed by Ang Lee and it is a beautiful movie. It, re oh, it is a beautiful, beautiful movie. So I really recommend that one. Maybe that, that may be my favorite just like straight up adaptation of a classic I've seen just because it's so well done. Um, yeah, I, I really love this particular one. Okay, and then the eighth question are the worst classic to movie adaptations. And again, I have several, and this is very based on taste. Some of these I think are objectively bad and a couple of them are just like preference wise. So I'll start with like the ones that I think are more preference wise, I guess, and then get into a couple that I think are just like objectively not good. So I will say that I am sure that the Haunting of Hill House uh, miniseries adaptation on Netflix right now, I'm sure it's fine. Um, I will just say that it is so different than the source material that it's just hard for me to think of it as an adaptation and I couldn't get through it because I was just like, this is not the book. So I think I would probably like it in a year because I just recently reread this. So I think in a year when I'm like a little more distant and I'm not thinking of it as an adaptation as much, but more like and inspired by kind of thing, I probably could get into it, but like just my preference, I don't think that this is very good. Another one that's definitely like very much a preference thing 
is uh, the Cranford adaptations. I read this for Booktubeathon as my book that I was gonna then watch the adaptation of. I watched a couple of episodes and for me, it's a very well done series. Like, do not get me wrong. It's not that it's poorly executed. It's just that I don't think that they are bringing out in their adaptation the parts of this book that I really liked because I really saw this as sort of a book of intense, like, loneliness and like the quiet desperation of women who don't have men to care for them in a highly patriarchal society. So like that was what I was interested in and I just don't think that's what this adaptation was interested in. So therefore there's sort of just a mismatch of like taste. Another one that's just like taste wise, I and I th actually I think most people would probably agree with me. I don't think Jane Eyre has ever been well adapted. Like I've never seen one that I was like, oh, like you really capture what's great about the book. Yeah, basically just I don't think that this has a good adaptation yet and hopefully someday we will get one. And uh, I may be biased because this is my all time favorite book. Um, so I, I may have a particularly high standard for it, but uh, yeah, not good. And then three that I think are just like objectively bad. The first is the adaptation of The Hobbit that Peter Jackson did. Now I didn't include, I forgot to mention this, but I think that The Lord of the Rings uh, the Lord of the Rings adaptation that Peter Jackson did is one of the best adaptations that's ever been done of sort of like a classic book. And I would I would consider Tolkien at this point to be the cl a classic of fantasy literature. Um, I think that's fantastic. I think the project of trying to adapt The Hobbit as a war movie, the same way that that was sort of the genre lens he brought to The Lord of the Rings, like, I'm gonna make these like a war movie. He tried to do that with The Hobbit and it, the source material just doesn't support it. It just doesn't work well because The Hobbit is much more like rompy and fun and like more of a kind of like quest type story, like a fun quest. And I think that his adaptation like drains the fun out of it. It's also a book called The Hobbit and like the Hobbit in the movie, uh, Martin Freeman, seems to be the thing that Peter Jackson is least interested, like he's least interested in following him. So it just fundamentally did not work. The second Hobbit movie, I don't like, I think it's called The Desolation of Smaug, I think is the, <laughs> the second one, um, is I would say it's one of the two worst movies I've ever seen. Like, I just think it does not work as a movie and it doesn't work as an adaptation. It's just bad in my opinion. Um, so I, that is probably my least favorite classic adaptation now that I've ranted about it. Another two that I think I don't have as much kind of like just problems with, I just don't think they're good. One is the classic adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, which I believe has Laurence Olivier as Mr. Darcy, but I can't remember. I should look that up. Yeah, it is a Laurence Olivier. And then I think it's Greer Garson who's playing Lizzie and she's fine. I, I just think tonally this movie doesn't work. Like it's just not a very good adaptation. I do really like the Laurence Olivier Wuthering Heights adaptation. I think he's much more suited for a Heathcliff type character as opposed to Darcy. I just, I don't think it's a very, of the kind of classic movie adaptations of, of classic books. I think it's one of the least successful. And then another one that I just didn't think was good was Murder on the Orient Express. Um, the recent one with Kenneth Branagh, however you say his name. Um, yeah, I think it's not a good movie. It gets people en enjoying the source material again, so I'm thankful for it, but it's not terrible. It's just not accomplished. Um, and considering that the 1970s version of this is like one of my all time favorite movies that I absolutely absolutely adore um, is so it's just like it didn't live up to the like the the adaptation of this that I really love and I just thought it was bland and did weird things with the Poirot character I have a whole review and comparison of those two movies so I'll link that somewhere but anyway those are some uh, adaptations that I think did not work that well okay and then the ninth question is the favorite editions you like to collect more uh, for classics this surprises no one given my shelf and what you've been looking at, but the Penguin Clothbound Classics are my absolute favorite editions. I am trying to collect all of them. And that will include some books that I don't like or don't have a ton of interest in, but I just really, I love these. I think they're beautiful and they're books that I wanna have for the rest of my life. So I'm interested in having a complete set. The only like thing that the Penguin Clothbound Classics do not have that I would exhort them to consider having would be, they don't have Shakespeare. There's one, there's the sonnets. Um, there, there's some of his poetry. There's there's one of those in the collection. But like, give me like some Macbeth. Give me some Merchant of Venice. I would be like all about that. I would love for them to come out with um, a, at least a few great Shakespeare ones in this edition. So I don't have that. The other edition I'm collecting for books that I, classics that I want, 
do you like how I'm pointing to them? Classics that I want that do not come in this is the Everyman's Library Edition with the red spines when I can get them. So I also have some of the black spines just because them's the breaks. But yeah, those are the other editions I quite like. I just find both of them um, look really nice on the shelf. They hold up really well. I like the, I just like the way they're laid out. I like the page quality. I just, I like those editions. Um, and then I guess I should say that for my favorite Agatha Christie classics, I have been collecting them in this facsimile edition. So yeah, I have more collections than I guess I realized. It's a problem, I'm a book hoarder. Okay, and then the final question is an underhyped classic you'd recommend to anyone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go two different ways with this. The first one is sort of like a more straightforward interpretation of, the Woman in White by Wilkie Collins is one of my all-time favorite classics. It's a it's a formative um, text in the mystery genre. Wilkie Collins is, does great work in that genre. Um, him and Arthur Sir Arthur Conan Doyle are sort of the progenitors of mystery as we have it today. Like they were some of the kind of foundational text. Um, anyway, I absolutely love this book. This is uh, one of the books that I most recommend to people who are looking to get into classics because I think it's very approachable and user friendly. Even though it was written in the 19th century, it reads quite quite well to the modern ear. And um, it just is such a fun kind of campy. There's a lot of like sort of campy elements in this that are just a lot of fun. I think it has some really interesting subversions of sort of like character types in terms of like the the damsel in distress and sort of like her knight in shining armor. I think it undermines a lot of that. And it has a female protagonist in here who I think is just absolutely great. It also has wonderful, very mustache twirling villains in this. So this is like my more straightforward answer. The other thing though, I just wanted to tell you is that War and Peace is kind of, I mean, it's, it is a big honkin' book. There's no getting around that. It took me, I think, three years to get through this. I read this in college and I actually would like to go back and reread this in like kind of more one go as opposed to breaking it up so much because this book is actually genuinely really good. It, you know, I think it's, <clears throat> it's almost underhyped in the sense of like, I think that it may have a reputation of like, oh, that's just like something that pretentious people say that they've read because it's such a big book and it's a Russian classic and whatever. Like, I think that there can maybe be sort of a feeling of like, it doesn't deserve its hype and therefore almost becomes underhyped. And I would just tell you that this is genuinely a fantastic book. It has a lot of humor in it that I think is unexpected. Like in the one of the first chapters that like a bunch of guys get drunk and like steal a bear from the zoo and tie up a policeman and like put him out to sea. Like, I mean, like some crazy like hijinks happen in this at times. It is, it's definitely epic. And I think that the battle pieces are where I get a little more lost, but this was genuinely like, an amazing book. And like I said, I would like to reread it because I think it was probably a four star read for me. But I think a lot of that was because I I broke it up so much because I would just get distracted and not finish it. So like this is a rereading project I would really like to undertake because it's just it genuinely is really good. And you know, don't let its sort of reputation keep you from giving it a try. If you can if it sounds at all interesting to you, and you can get through like a honking long book, it's definitely worth your while. And I think it is genuinely a great classic that's worth reading still. So yeah, those are my uh, uh, classics picks for the classic book tag. I may do a different video. Like now that I've gotten through these questions, I didn't get to really get into my favorite classics. So maybe I'll do a separate video on that because I really, I love classics and I'm really in the mood, been in the mood recently to kind of get back into that. So um, yeah, maybe we will, we will see if I can do that. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, definitely like subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. Let me know if you have any favorite classics that I didn't mention. And yeah, I think that will do it. I hope you're having a really lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.